I built 50 microsites and I'm going to teach you in this video how to do it yourself, right? So here's the 50 microsites blueprint. Why should you care about a microsite? Well, we'll get into it and basically you can make a lot of money with microsites easier than ever before because we have AI, right? So here's the blueprint, the problem, the formula, niche, the build, the automations, the scaling and the money. And on top of that, I did a video last month that was very popular and you all asked a lot of questions, right? The community asked a lot of questions here, such as do you build citations? What address do you use? Which AI? is answering the phone and so on and so forth. This is a really cool way for anyone to have an instant business, right? There's two ways to play this. So let's just jump right into it. So when I come over to Google and I want to focus a local business, this typically works with local business. Let's say epoxy floor in Texas. Now pay attention to the auto suggest that matters too. But what we're going to do is scroll past the sponsored posts, go past the map pack here, which is not the best thing. When you see a map pack, you don't want to necessarily create in that niche. There's more competition when there's a map pack. This is the map pack, right? And I'm telling you, there's niches without map pack and you can dominate those. But if you can be here, right under the map pack, you can be this guy right here, which this is the website. It looks nice. If you can be this website, you are going to get tons of leads. And if you can service them yourself because you are the business owner, you can make a lot of money. But better yet, the instant business, right? The instant business is saying, well, I have 20 different websites on Epoxy Coton in Texas and I get 30 qualified leads a month. What am I going to do with those 30 qualified leads? Well, you bet I'm going to sell them to businesses for about $100 to $200 a pop. Now let's jump into it. You need to get your thinking cap on because we're gonna go over these fast, right? I wanna be fast. So the problem is this, and you have to pay attention. Most local businesses rely on a single generic website that struggles to rank beyond page one. Do you feel me? One website equals typically stagnant lead flow and wasted market and spend. This is huge. It's crazy to me nowadays that businesses, local businesses especially have one website when you can create 20 to 30 of them quickly to get more leads. This is good for marketers like me and you. So Google's emphasis on relevance, listen to this, and intent means broad websites cannot compete with hyper-focused queries. So if I come back to this website right here and I go down to the service, let's say that I have a website called flakegaragefloorstexas.com, right? This is one of their particular services. What they're trying to do is have a website that ranks for these different services, designer epoxy and flake garage floor. But if I come in and I hyper-focus on one particular service, I can beat out pretty much everyone. That's one of the secrets, right? If I come over to another website, here's the different services. Let's click here. Why do all these uh, websites have nice cars? Pretty cool. So they have services. This is not really a good website in my opinion because it doesn't really give us options and service. But this one gave us some ideas. Here's another epoxy website. Let's go to services. Let's click here. All right, we have a garage epoxy floors. We have whole home epoxy floors. Uh, swimming pool and so on. So if I'm able to create a website that's hyper-focused where everyone else is going broad, then I can win pretty darn easily. Now, next up is the formula. So we have the problem, we're getting into the formula and we're gonna talk about money later, but we have quite a lot to go. And remember, we have community questions we'll go over. If you have questions as you watch this, remember to put them in the comments below. So the formula is simply this. We go after vertical plus location. So this combines a specific service plus a location, a precise location. I should highlight this. What does this mean and why does it matter? EMDs. You've probably seen me talk about them before. EMDs are exact match domains. They leverage the formula to signal Google. It is relevant. What does this look like? If we come over to Namecheap and we go to beast mode, I typed in 10 different URLs here. I want to know if these are available to purchase because it all starts with what? It all starts with the proper domain name, right? And these are super cheap to buy. So I want to know about Epoxy Floor Houston, Epoxy Floor Fort Worth, etc. And it will show you quickly, okay, the ones in blue are available and the ones grayed out are not. So all of a sudden I know that, okay, people are probably already doing this in Texas. But the beautiful, the beautiful thing is that there's 50 states, right? There's 50 states and I bet they're not doing it in every state. And furthermore, these are very broad exact match domains, epoxy floor. We could do something very specific such as swimming pool epoxy Fort Worth or texas.com. So the whole thing here is we want to show Google that we have very high relevance for a specific service. Now picking your niche comes next. We have the formula, we already addressed the problem. The niche is so, so important. Most people will mess this up. And the reason they mess this up is because it's just an imagination thing. So my goal here is to just kind of tweak, jar your imagination a little bit. So 
skip over the super saturated industries like plumbing and roofing. I've tried both of these myself. I've tried both of these myself and guess what? It doesn't work that well. Why? Because there's too much competition, simply put. So we need to find micro verticals or subservices. So for example, pool, heater, repair, and mobile, right? So if I type this in, pool, heater, repair, and mobile, always make sure you look at the auto suggestions to give yourself some ideas. Sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. I was surprised to see a map pack here, but then the organic stuff right here is where you need to pay attention. You will see there is no exact match domains here, right? This is all broad. It's Reddit. When you start to see stuff like this, you know you can, com you can compete pretty darn easily, but you need to verify the volume, right? So it's this dance between viability via competition and volume, because if no one's typing in pool heater repair and mobile, who cares, right? I can rake a website for the weirdest obscure terms, but who cares? I need to make money here, which requires volume. In other words, people need to be typing this in often in their computer to find my websites. Now we usually use Google, and this is kind of a tangent. We usually use Google as our, our uh, baseline, but realize a lot of demographics, a lot of people, like a lot of different people that might not be like you will use bing.com, right? Microsoft. And that's much easier to rank for with this tactic. So if we can compete on Google, we can probably dominate on Bing. Now on to the build. So if you are a super technical person and want to do this yourself, this is probably what you were waiting for. Like how did I build 50 microsites affordably, right? So here's some options for you and I'll tell you what I've done. So purchase an EMD for each niche location. So EMD is the domain. Remember we had Namecheap, this is the EMD domain, right? So you're going to purchase those and then you're going to spin up a simple CMS instance. A CMS is just where the website has its words hosted. WordPress, right? WordPress is just a CMS, a content management system. It's just jargon for a website, right? So most people think of a website, it's synonymous with WordPress. I have used WordPress. WordPress is cool. WordPress is good. WordPress has advantages. Its advantages, it's very easy for you to create a WordPress website, one. It's very hard to create 50 of these WordPress websites that are unique. So we have a custom solution and the custom solution is built upon a headless CMS. It's lightweight, it's hyper fast. And if I wanna spin up 200 websites, it's not hard to do in a particular niche because once you figure out your niche and what you want to write in the structure of that website, I can just you know drum up 200 of them. The only limitation then is like the cost of the domain and the hosting. Right, so if you wanna know how we do our system, which is hyper scalable, if you wanna maybe do this for your own business, or if you wanna sell these to other businesses, which is a super viable business, we've done that ourselves, uh, come over to the Rank Expand Academy. This is where everything will be. But coming back to the build, you have to structure your pages accordingly, right? Service overviews, local testimonials, frequently asked questions, CTAs. The CTAs we're gonna get into later. A CTA is a call to action. So when someone comes onto the website, how do they actually get to the business owner that I sell the leads to? Or how do I grab the information to do whatever I want with it, right? Do I wanna procure the service myself or do I wanna sell it off, right? And I encourage you to keep the content laser targeted. So 450 to 600 words and focus solely on that vertical plus location. Your pages on the website need to be hyper focused. Now, automations are something that I think most businesses really need. So you've seen videos. I've done these videos on AI automations. You can sell this, what I'm saying right now, you can sell to businesses across the nation and make a whole business out of it. Make tens of thousands of dollars a month just off of this. So listen, with our microsites, we have automations. We implement AI powered virtual receptionists that answer the calls, they qualify the leads and transcribe details in real time. How do we do this? We use Vapey, right? This is a voice AI agent. Developers are the ones who build this out. It's not like an out of the box thing that just works for you, right? You have to be somewhat knowledgeable in this stuff. But if you are, and you are technical, Vapey is what we use, it's crazy. Now on top of that, we have uh, form submissions to a webhook or something similar that push straight to our CRM and it emails the client. So I don't wanna be the person auditing the different leads that come in. I don't wanna talk to them. I don't wanna to talk to the people that call in our different microsites and I don't even wanna to touch anything. So what happens is this person calls in, there's a call to action to call our website, boom. Now we have a Vapey assistant, right? So we have a virtual assistant right here using this. They're talking to them. These calls usually last between a minute and three minutes. You'd be surprised on how long these calls are and how good the AI agents are too. 
right? And then it just pushes to our client's email. So they automatically get the lead, the transcription of that conversation, a download to that conversation, and then an invoice, right? That's how it goes. And so automating this delivery ensures no lead slips through the cracks. There are many businesses, right? This is kind of a tangent, but there's many businesses that would do really well if they would have an AI agent answer the phone because there's solo owner operators that are doing the job. Like, let's say they're a concrete guy. They're doing the job. Someone calls in. They're too busy to answer the phone. Why not have an AI agent answer the phone? It's so good nowadays that you'll make more money. Now, before we get to the money and the community questions, let's talk about scaling. So if you have a build template, if you figure this out, you can deploy a script, you can launch five to 10 microsites per week. If you really want to scale this out, you could have a team of people in the background doing this, but by yourself with the system that we have at Rank Expand, you can easily launch five to 10 microsites per week. The cost, right, we're going to get into in the money section. How much does it cost to actually, you know, build these out? Um, so you can use a spreadsheet driven workflow. You can manage NAP records, name, address, phone number, SSLs, and all these things. But bottom line is, if you want to do this, come over. We have already figured this out for our agency. We're going to share it with you here. Now let's talk about the money, what everyone wants to talk about. So there's a few ways to make money with this concept, right? And I, I like some of them more than others. And I'm learning as I go, right? As I interface with clients. So number one, you can charge clients either a flat fee per qualified lead. So let's say I send you a lead, you're gonna pay me 75 to 250 bucks. Or you can also, we can slice it up for performance. So 10% of job value. And this really depends on your automation sophistication. That's, that's the pain in the butt, right? So how am I going to track whether or not for this one, let's do this, let's enter right here. How am I going to track if they actually sold the job? So let's say that I send a job to an epoxy floor guy and he, he charges $3,000 to do your garage, right? I get 10% of that, so that's 300 bucks. But how do I know if he, if he sold the job? That requires some sort of trust or CRM access. So this is definitely a more reliable source. But if you trust the person, you know the person, this is potentially better because you, you kind of have equity stake in a way, a performance equity stake in the company at this. I've seen people do this tactic with microsites they're so successful with their microsites that eventually they get folded into the business and they are true equity partners because the leads are that good, right? Or you can charge a flat fee per website. Build out 150 bucks per website with a 12 month engagement and the right to buy the IP at the end of the term. That's typically what we charge, right? 150 bucks per month per website. And you can get as many leads as you want. Our clients get as many leads as you want off that website, that's great, right? That's more steady Eddie right? The, the revenue from that is predictable and it's easier to track. This is the easiest to track, but let's do a little bit of math here. So each microsite delivering, let's say three to 10 calls per month. It could be more, it can be less, right? If you don't know what you're doing because you're just winging it, it can be much less. It can be zero because you came into a competitive niche. You build the website wrong. Your systems are not right. There's a lot that can go wrong here, but let's assume three to 10 calls per month at an average of a hundred dollars uh, value per lead. So one microsite can, can produce 300 to a thousand dollars per month. Right. And when you scale to 50 sites, that can be a lot of money. Now, how much does it cost to build these things? And here's the cost right here. It's time plus hosting, plus the domain, plus the APIs, plus the phone number. And what this is, is free. If you're going to do this yourself, your time is free, right? It's just time. If you have more time than money, then use your time. If you have more money than time, then pay someone else to do it right? So the hosting is usually about five bucks a month. The domain is about a dollar a month. The API is five bucks a month. And then the phone about five bucks a month. So each website um, can cost you maybe $15 a month to, to create. We've gotten it down for our systems to around six to seven to eight dollars a month per website and that's why it's so scalable now we have some community questions i have highlighted the ones in yellow i feel comfortable with answering here on this video so after watching this if you have questions make sure to ask questions on this particular video i'll, I'll look at them and we'll answer them together so good question here is do you need a different name address phone number for each site of the business uh, yes. So each website we create has a unique footprint and that includes name, address, phone number. Every single website looks totally unique in terms of these type of things. They stand alone, right? How long did it take to launch all 50 microsites? I don't know, a couple months because we were figuring it out. Nowadays, it can be much faster. How big are the microsites? Are they one page? 
Are they two pages? Ours are usually 50 pages and above. I used the word microsites and someone called me out on it. It's like, dude, this is not a microsite. I agree. Microsite's probably not the best term. To me, the micro portion of this is the, the, the required time and work. It's a micro amount of work to build a 50 pager, right? It's the same amount of work most people do on WordPress to create a one pager. It's crazy. I call them microsites. Um, what about links to each website? Buying links for 50 websites will be very expensive. How do you handle that? Now, if you saw the cost, you know, we just talked about how much it costs to roll these websites out. You realize we have budget for each website to buy links because of that. We buy citations, namely citations. Uh, do you build citations? Yes, we do. That's what we namely do. Doesn't Google block you for suspected spamming if you build 50 similar websites? Uh, they're similar websites for sure, but they all are unique. The footprint is unique. You cannot tie them together. This is not a PBN. There is no links going from this website to that website to this website. So um, it's very hard for anyone to say, oh, that's that's Jesse's website there. And that's that's another one of his. That'd be very hard to do. Um, do you link each microsite to your main domain? Absolutely not. That would be a PBN. Bad idea. Are the results too good to share? Why not show any of your actual sites? That's a great question. If I show you my actual sites, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, really, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a bad thing for us because... Well, we've already done this on this channel with me showing you my websites and they get shut down, they get banned, they get blacklisted, right? So you're suggesting to acquire 50 domains plus hosting. It's about 600 bucks at least. What's the real cost breakdown? It's much less than that because we don't use conventional ways to go about it, right? So hopefully this was helpful. Appreciate you. If you want to learn more, come to the Rank Expand Academy. I'll have a link in the description.